Okay, so I'm here with Ian Cobain, who is a current Gloucestershire player and also has been allocated to Downing Cricket Club for the past few seasons um, as their pro player. Firstly, Ian, we'll start talking about your time at Gloucestershire. Um, how have you found it over the past however many years you've been there? Uh, yeah, well, it's, been, it's been great. Uh, Gloucestershire obviously gave me a chance in the, in the professional game. Um, I was a bit older than probably probably most people getting their first contract. I was 24, so it was, um, yeah, it was, it was nice to, to get the chance. Um, Bristol's a great place to be. Like I've settled in really well. Managed to make some great mates and and yeah, really enjoying it. From your time at Gloucestershire, um, has there been any moments where you've thought, you know, th this is why I live to be a cricketer? Um, yeah, it's funny actually because like as a youngster growing up, like I, that was all I ever wanted to do was become a professional cricketer. Um, and then once you sort of get into the into the, the day to day grind of, of the season, it soon becomes quite apparent. It's not what it's sort of. It's not. It's not all. Like um, all fairy tales and what have you, it's, it's a it's a hard slog. It's um, you know you just get on that <clears throat> you get on that treadmill of, of day to day. You're on the road, you, you play, you're in a hotel, you stop off, you're, you're eating every meal from a service station. So it is it is hard work, uh, like, and it's it's not what it's all cracked up to be. But don't get me wrong, it is it is still a lot of fun at the same time. Um, don't um, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you sign a white ball contract for Gloucestershire last season? a white ball contract um, I just had the I had uh, red ball second team cricket made optional for me okay. so still still available to play four day cricket if, if selected or if there's any injuries or what have you um, but yeah just sort of obviously with, with my body getting a bit older and <laughs> having my testimonial year last year as well um, it just sort of freed up quite a lot of, quite a lot of time for me which was which was quite nice to be honest Has there been obviously you've just uh, mentioned a few reasons there but has there been any other reasons personally or maybe professionally that you haven't quite cut it in the four day squad re in recent years um, I thought it was a bit unlucky to be to be left out of the out of the side early on in my career um, I was sort of opened the bat in for the first probably first half of my of my career and then deservedly got dropped <laughs> um, but then I sort of I got, got sort of forced my way back into the team coming in in the middle order and I thought I had, a, I had a really good year my second year. I scored maybe 800 runs. Um, there was yeah. only Hamish Marshall who scored run, more runs than me. Um, and then the year after, I literally didn't play didn't play a four day game, um, which was a bit of a bizarre one. But that sort of yeah, that was that was a, a bit of a bit of an upset in my career really, and I've never really never really got back over it to be honest. You you talked about just a down there and you know a bump in the road, and also I can remember a bump in the road. Um, you didn't take part in the 2015 Royal London One Day Cup final. Um, that was due to injury, I think. Um, yeah, that's right. So, well, it was actually quite funny. Too. Obviously, I'd say I got left out of the 4A team, but then I was actually playing in the second team, and Geraint Jones retired um, from cricket. So then they were trying to they wanted to bring in a new captain. Um, so then I actually got I got brought back into the into the 4A team as captain to bat in the middle order and to hopefully take over for the rest of the season and then you know that could have that could have sort of kick started my my championship yeah. career again um unfortunately actually um it was it was during my second game as captain in the Cheltenham festival my first game we, we beat north Ants in two days so i was thinking geez this is all right like <laughs> off, off to a bloody fire in my uh <laughs> in my captaincy and then it was day two um, of a four-day game against leicester and uh, one of the academy guys uh, bowled me a beamer in the net and yeah unfortunately broke my arm and then that meant I missed missed the rest of the, the missed the rest of the four days season and I also missed the whole of the, the fifty over competition obviously where we went on to win it. How big of a blow was that for you personally? It was it was massive. Yeah, it was it was a huge, huge blow. Um obviously been in the club for ten years now. Um played in four five five quarter finals, um four twenty twenty and, and one um, 50 over quarter final as well and obviously that's the only trophy that we've won since since I've been I've been there obviously with all the all the success back in the early days um, so it would have been, obviously been nice to, to play a part in that scenes I've sort of been pigeonholed as a, as a one day player as well um, and then obviously the, the big the big hammer blow as well was was losing the captaincy and, and my yeah. spot in the four day team through, through breaking my arm you know who knows like I could have had a, a, a strong finish to the season and who knows, I could still be club captain now. Yeah, 100% agree. And 
Um, just to just to quickly focus on your your white ball stuff um, in the fifty overs in the T20s, has there been any game that you can remember vividly for any reason? You know why it was maybe a good victory or a good a good moment personally for you? Um, I think personally um, was was getting my my uh, first twenty twenty hundreds um, against Middlesex not last year year before. Um, so that was that was was it? Oh, Matt, it actually been last year. I can't actually remember. Um, but that was a huge, huge moment in, in my career. Um, I love playing twenty twenty cricket, and that is uh, that's obviously something that that stands out massively for me. Um, and then another another game playing fifty over cricket actually was um, we had a we had a win at Lords. Yeah. When we only had to chase a low total, but we were I think we were forty for four or. 50 for five or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And, uh, and me and Benny, me and Benny managed to put on a partnership, and we actually we ended up winning the game in the last over from from like pretty much absolutely rolled off. So that's a, that's obviously a huge huge memory for me, and that's probably one of the best wins I've been involved in. I mean. It would be rude not to ask you about batting with one of Gloucestershire's greatest ever players, Michael Klinger. Um, how would you describe batting with him? Funny, actually, it took a bit of bit of time to get used to. Um, he's he's very very intense on the cricket field. Like he's, he's such a lovely, like mild mannered character off the field. <laughs> Literally, wasn't say boo to a goose, and then you get him on the cricket pitch, and he just becomes this different beast. It's hilarious. He, he is so intense. So it took a bit of time for the lads to get used to batting with him. Um, <laughs> so at the end of his end of his first season. He, he called all the lads in like on a, to have a one-on-one meeting or like a bit of an appraisal, if you like. <laughs> and pretty much, I was one of the last ones. I think I was might have actually been the last the last player to, to see him. And he was like, "Is there anything that I could have done it, could have done better, you know, to improve my sort of my time here?" And I just started laughing. I was like, "Listen, mate, like <laughs> you need to just chill out a little bit. <laughs> the, lads, the lads don't know what to do." Like the walking on their shoulder around you, and he started laughing. He said, "Yeah, I think quite a few of the lads have mentioned that as well." So he he took it on board, and he he sort of chilled out a little bit. But geez, he's still pretty intense. Because I know you were the vice captain, and I can remember having a conversation with you about you know putting your ideas forward. Um, did he ever listen to your ideas on the field? <laughs> Not really. No, you have to. It was, uh, you have to try and make it sound like it was his idea. <laughs> Otherwise, you had no chance. So that was that was quite a difficult one. Well, it was quite funny, like, I'd, I'd sort of run past him going from long on to long on, and I'd run past him every now and again, I'd be like, Maxi, Maxi, like, what do you think, what do you think about this? And he'd be like, oh, if he liked it, he, he wouldn't respond to you, um, or you'd just get shot down in flames normally, so, like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that. But if he didn't say anything, you're like, oh, I might have, uh, might have just planted a seed there, and then sure enough, like, an over or two later, he'd be like, Coey, Coey! What do you reckon about this? Oh, great idea, Maxi. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of you gave him the idea. He thought about it and thought, you know, what, I'll I'll tell Coey that it's my idea now. Yeah, exactly right. Um, uh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> so from obviously playing with um, a Gloucestershire great, uh, you know, you you've batted with Michael Klinger. Um, I could name a few more. From going then to down end and batting with someone like Nathan Roberts, um, what's what's the comparison? What's the difference? Uh, not, there's not a great deal of difference. Nathan's a great player. He's a great player. Um, from from your time at down end, obviously you've you've played for down end most of your years as an allocated player, but you seem to keep coming back. Is that personal choice? It is. Yeah. So my first my first two seasons with down end were allocated. And then I had a year where I was allocated to Bristol, and then the um, the allocation sort of got lifted, and it was left up to, left up to the lads to choose where they went. So I obviously wanted to come back to Downend, and, and yeah, I've played for Downend ever since. Which that's the last probably five or six years, I think. Yeah, and can you remember? I think we'll we'll speak last season. Um, any memorable games or moments um, playing for Downend? Yeah, well, I think we were just chatting before about how we we ended up having a tie with Potter. Last year, which was obviously a, a, a big highlight. You don't play in many ties. No. Um, so yeah, to, to play in one was actually yeah, it was, it was it was pretty exciting. To be fair, I think we batted first and got got quite a big score, and we thought we were pretty safe. And then the genius that is Matty Jackson, I think he got two wickets in the first over, and we were like, oh, well, this is just done. This is done and dusted. But then their best player was probably or probably one of their best players. <laughs> I, know, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> Yeah, and then he just he hit one to mid off, 
and <laughs> you know it was just an absolute goober like just it was a regulation basically the batter might as well have underarmed it in the mid off <laughs> and our, our leader at the time bloody Carlo Gregory just fisted it and chucked it on the floor and the bloke went on to get like, probably 140 or 160 or something like that and, and <laughs> we ended up tying so yeah that was a uh, it was all down to Gregor to, to keep the entertainment <laughs> <laughs> um, have you enjoyed playing for Down End? I mean, obviously, I spoke to Craig Miles earlier, and Milo said about the the way that he felt he was part of the club and he was actually a Down End player. Um, do you kind of feel in the same vein like that? Absolutely, mate. Yeah, that, that, that's the big reason why I came back um, and and played for Down End through my choice. Um, I've really, really enjoyed being part of the club. You know, everyone, there's no, there's no airs and graces. Like, you could be playing for, you could play for England or you could be one of the youngsters off the street. Everyone's, everyone's treated the same way. And, and that's, the, that's a big thing for me. And I really, really enjoy that culture at the club. I think it's fantastic. Um, we'll speak from obviously off the field to on the field. Um, I, I think I might guess who you'd, who you'd say. However, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Um, but who, can you name your, you know, your best player that you've played with at Down End? Matty Jackson there's absolutely no questions about it with bat and ball he's, he's been unbelievable how he hasn't played professional cricket is beyond me really? yeah I, honestly he's like he, he does he basically does the same job as Ryan Higgins does in the first team for <laughs> the gloss he does he bowls about the same sort of pace maybe a little bit slower Yeah, and just tries to give it a whack like he's honestly, he bowls some of the best balls I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I, I, I will agree. I was gonna guess Jacko, and obviously, um, he was your captain. He's been your captain ever since you've been at the club. Um, what's he like to to play under? He's brilliant. I love the way he gets fired up. Like he, he brings that football change in room to cricket. <laughs> it, it makes me <laughs> laugh. Like. <laughs> There's no, there's no sort of beating around the bush with Jacko. You know exactly where you stand, which is brilliant, and that's the way it should be. From from your time at Downend, um, have you seen many changes within the club, um, both on and off the field? Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that has. Um, I've always enjoyed the way Downend have, have managed to get the youngsters through. Um, I've really, I think that's that's a big part of of club cricket is is bringing the youngsters through, and obviously yourself, well, making your debut only probably was it last year or year before or something. Yeah, last yeah, season. First team. So like, that's that's obviously fantastic. You're you're a down end lad, and and bringing the youngsters through is, is massively important. But also as well having that connection with Gloucester and and getting the the young lads from Gloucester to come and play for down end mm. as well, mm. because. You know, you learn you learn a hell of a lot playing there. You're playing with obviously with Matty Jackson and, and, and people like that. You know, it's good for the youngsters to to come and learn. Yeah, I, I I do agree with you. I think it's good getting the the juniors involved with the adult setup and kind of, you know, I mean, down end attracts the, probably the best crowds in in the in the league really. Um, obviously it looks a bit bigger because of the small ground, but do you reckon that the ground is an attraction for players to come and, you know, they really want to play at Down End? I think so, yeah. I really enjoy playing at Down End, obviously because being a batter and it being so small. <laughs> um, so it's nice, to, it's nice to get some big runs there. Uh, but in terms of a, of a ground, I think it's, I think it's lovely. It's, it's very picturesque. You know, you've got the, the church there in the background and yeah, I think it's really nice. I think it's a really good place to play cricket. Talking of big runs, can you remember your best, uh, your highest score? Sorry, with the bat. Or down end. In any any form of cricket for Gloucestershire for down end. In any form of cricket. Yeah. Um, I managed to get. I got two hundred and twenty four for the Gloucester second team in one of the in, in one of the champ like one of the three day championship games. And. Um, and then for down end, I think what's my highest? I think I got one eighty in a game. Was that against Bri- Bridgewater? Possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, I remember, in fact, it was. It was against Bridgewater, and I got 180 off 100 balls, and we got beat. <laughs> a bit so like... It sort of put, a bit of a, put a bit of a sour note on it. A bit like the game against Potter and hitting, you hit 160-odd, and then we go and tie the game. But do, when, you, when you score such a big score, um, as a professional cricketer, you've been in the game a long time. Um, how How big a blow is it if you... 
personally achieve a high score and then you go on to either lose or don't get the win that you want out of that game? Oh, it's, it's huge, mate. Like, it, I prefer to get no runs, like literally get zero, a duck, and us win. Yeah. I know it's such a cliche to say, but I genuinely do feel that way. I yeah. hate losing more than anything. It really, really, really annoys me. And that's in any form of, well, not even cricket, in, any, in anything. I'm one of the most competitive people you'll ever come across. <laughs> like, you could be playing bloody tiddlywinks and, you know, I'd get fired up. <laughs> um, talk, do you know what? It's going to lead me on to my next question of, um, is there any team, county team, um, that you that you always look forward to playing and you think, do you know, if we get one over these, that'll be brilliant? Obviously, the, the local rivals of, of Somerset, it's always so, so nice to beat them, especially beat them in, in their ground as well, on their home turf. You know, you play there, you cop so much abuse. And then to, to beat them on their own patches, that's definitely the best feeling. Can you can you just out of memory think of any any games against Somerset that you've really enjoyed playing? We've had we've had a couple of real close games against Somerset actually. I'm, I'm maybe take away my first year or two where we used to just get pounded. <laughs> um, but in probably the last maybe six or seven years in particular, I I think we probably had one over on them to be honest. We normally we normally perform pretty well, and we, obviously with the big crowds as well, it's great to play. To play in front of the big crowds. Um, we normally get them when just after an international at the Bristol Ground, and you know we've got the temporary stands up. And I think our record attendance to twenty twenty was against Somerset. I think we had probably fifteen, sixteen thousand, and it was it was brilliant to play in front of. You speak about you know the crowds and and how good it is to play against you know such big players and also big counties, but. Has there been any bowler, because obviously you're a batsman in the in the pro game, has there been any bowler that you've not been scared of, but kind of thought, oh, I, I don't fancy facing him today? Yeah, there's a couple actually. So when I was playing championship cricket, the, when the, oh, it was my first or second year, and they were using these Tiflex balls, like the old Tiflex balls. They were shaped like a saucer, and they were dark purple. They were <laughs> horrendous things. And then you used to face someone like a David Masters from Essex, who bowled 75 mile an hour at tops. But he just used to swing them and nip them. He was unplayable. And also someone who's still still plugging away now, but he's 43 year old, is Darren Stevens. Yeah. Like, he's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I, can, I can remember watching you um, in a T20 game against Kent, and I... I I think you'd like to recall the story, but getting hit in the helmet? Oh, Rabada. Rabada hit me. I think it was my second ball of face. Um, he just dropped one short, and I just went to, went to pull him. And it, before it moved, it had just hit me straight on the badge and bounced back over the bowler's head, back over the umpire, and landed just short and mid-on. But it, that was probably the hardest. And that's probably the hardest I've been hit. Was well, he... Back. Was he probably the quickest that you faced as well then? I don't think he's uh, probably not the quickest, no. Um, but he just he's he's got such a quick action, like he's just like he comes jogging in and he's got such a quick arm and he bowls it, you know, he bowls it fast. He probably bowls it ninety mile an hour. And um, but it, it was just just because he's so quick through the crease, I just wasn't expecting how fast he was. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at someone like a, a Mark Wood who comes charging in, and it, he's he's rapid. Well, yeah. Um, I thought someone like a, someone like a Sean Tate, you know, they yeah. know, you, know you know they're gonna bowl fast. Yeah, Sean yeah, Tate yeah. Definitely, definitely fast as that face. Sean um, Tate is. But, yeah, but you know, but you know they're gonna bowl fast. Like they come charging in, like a big grunt, and you're just thinking, right, this is gonna be rapid. Whereas Rabada, he sort of just like jogs in quite quite easily, a bit like Jofra Archer, really. Yeah. You know, they sort of just they just amble in and just wang it down there at ninety clicks. Like you just you don't expect how fast it is. Yeah, you've played in the cat. You've played in the county game, and obviously, you know that the, the um, club game for for many years. And as you pointed out earlier, it was your testimonial year last year. Um, have you got any advice for any young cricketers coming up, hoping to aspire to be someone like you? I think I think you've just got to be so driven. Like you've got to be so hungry, and 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 basically very selfish to be honest. Um, you know. Before you get your first contract, then you've got to be super selfish because you're you're 
competing against all the other youngsters as well. Yeah. You know, every, like there's there's so many people all trying to become professional cricketers. So you've got to be you've got to be better than the rest of them, whether that be skill wise or or um, like mentally wise. You've got to be so much stronger than than the rest of your peers. Um, for me, like I said, I was a bit older, so I sort of had time to figure that out a little bit. And you know, I, I faced a few setbacks at Lancashire, and you know, sort of got overlooked a little bit. So I done I sort of done the hard yards, if you like, of, of you know, sort of going around the house and going to the MCC on cricketers. You yeah. know, I tri- trialed basically trialed every game yeah. that you play for like two years, and then finally I got a chance, and I was like, right, I've got my chance now. Like I'm not going to let it slip. So then it just it just you just got to be so determined to work that much harder than everybody else. Is that the advice that you'd give? Is to be determined to work harder than anyone else? Then absolutely. And then when you and if you do, if you are lucky enough to get a contract, then you've got to work just as hard as everybody else just to keep it. You know what I mean? And if yeah. you obviously want to aspire to play for England, then you've got to do you've got to do the same again. You've got to you've got to work harder than everybody. You've got to yeah. you know got to apply yourself and you know. You, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough work. It is very, very tough work. Well, um, thank you very much for, for spending, you know, 21 minutes of um, these this quarantine time with me, Coe. Um, much appreciated, and I wish you all the best for the future. Cheers, Oh, Nice to chat to you, mate.